December 19th, 2017 Journal. Supervisor Epic. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the journal. Thank you, Supervisor Epic. Supervisor Winkle. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Any discussion? If not, Yes or no? Chancellor of UW Green Bay, if you come up front, please. We'll be discussing the status of the UW Sheboygan and UW, UW Green Bay consolidation. Thank you. Chancellor, how are you with technology? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you, I think you're doing great. I'm pretty we'll impressed. Get, we'll get I'm not sure this would work in a faculty center meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's a delight to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting us uh, to come up and visit with you uh, a little bit this after this evening. Uh, we are very excited in Green Bay about the consolidation of the uh, University of Wisconsin Green Bay, Sheboygan, uh, Marinette, and Manitowoc. Uh, I think, uh, and I, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about our vision for this, and then tell you about our process briefly, and let you. Uh, I don't know if there'll be questions, but if there are, we certainly want you to ask them. If not, to get with us later. Um, we do have our Sheboygan colleagues back here, Jackie and Dan, who you, who you know, and uh, I will just say they have been fantastic uh, colleagues. We're all in the UW system trying to make something uh, different work. Uh, we've been on the Sheboygan campus a couple times, and thank you both, Dan, Jen, for coming. Uh, Tony Warner is back here with me. He's uh, Vice Chancellor for University Advancement and liaison to the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Foundation. He's with us here. He's, he'll be working with the Sheboygan Foundation and their foundations at the other two uh, 
colleges as well. Uh, and then Ben Jonio is here, who's uh, Chief of Staff uh, in the Chancellor's Office, fresh from uh, <coughs> representing Mako's staff, so we're glad to have them with us today. Thank you. We, we really think this is a historical opportunity to reimagine higher education, workforce development, economic uh, uh, development in this region. If you just think about it, we have a, a pretty interesting footprint here. Uh, the University of Wisconsin Green Bay with uh, Sheboygan, Manitowoc, the Green Bay campus, and on up to Marinette. Uh, it includes about 14 counties. If you take out the uh, the uh, population of the bigger areas in Milwaukee and Madison, it includes about 25% of the population of the state of uh, Wisconsin. It sits on the largest freshwater ecosystem in the world. Uh, it includes uh, several uh, uh, very interesting, exciting tourist areas, including Sheboygan and Door County and up in the Marinette area. And of course, it's got Green Bay, which is an internationally branded city with an NFL team. It's a very, very unique uh, opportunity. And uh, we're thinking about this university as, uh, as a single university with four campuses, a, uh, a mother campus and branch campuses. In fact, that's the way uh, the system has approached the Higher Learning Commission to accredit these institutions. Um, in that uh, capacity, we would work toward a goal, and this will take a while, you can't do this right off the bat, to make sure that anybody who walks in the door of this university, <coughs> wherever that is, Sheboygan or Manitowoc or Marinette or Green Bay, has access to all of the associates, bachelors, masters, uh, and we have one doctoral degree at uh, UW Green Bay. So we expect our goal will be to expand educational opportunities. UW Green Bay is an access-oriented institution, so that uh, philosophy fits in very well with what's happening uh, here at Sheboygan. And in that regard, the colleges actually bring us a good bit of expertise we don't have uh, for uh, helping uh, students of all ages and all uh, all circumstances in life get through and get a degree. Uh, we expect uh, there to be uh, a single faculty, uh, so students in this university who have access to those to that faculty and all the services that uh, you would expect a university to, a student, a student to have. In fact, by accrediting rules, we have to extend those out to the university. Uh, we do want to keep the identity of these campuses intact. Uh, it's very important that we have. Uh, the Sheboygan name in the in the in the, this part this campus. We want to do that because there's a very strong brand identity here, and because uh, we can leverage that. Uh, we will work with the foundations. Uh, those foundations that are in uh, TAC right now are very excited about uh, continuing their efforts uh, to work with us. One of the most exciting things about this for us is that we uh, have a different relationship with three county governments. And uh, we have a very close relationship with the Brown County government, but it's different than this one, since you folks own the facilities and have uh, a lot to say about how they develop. And that's, that's an advantage to us. We're very, very excited in particular about Sheboygan. The engineering facilities are very important to us. In four weeks, we'll go to the Board of uh, Regents with a proposal to expand our engineering programs at the uh, University of Wisconsin Green Bay to add mechanical engineering to establish a school of engineering. We expect that to pass. Uh, we have raised about $8 million toward that, including a naming gift for the school of engineering. So the, the new university include, that includes the Sheboygan campus will have engineering. Uh, and we have already started discussions with Platteville about how to continue their work here and expand on it. Uh, throughout this region uh, so that we can offer engineering degrees that uh, are um, uh, that they're not here. Uh, we have really strong health sciences. We hope to expand those. We have a great business school. We hope to expand that. We have a very close relationship with the uh, Green Bay Packers. Uh, we are, in fact, going into business with them on the Titletown Tech project. We will be funding an entrepreneur in residence at that facility and a few other uh, parts of the management of that facility, and that's something that we've worked on with them for a long time. Um, so we believe that this uh, is an opportunity for all of us. We have a very optimistic uh, spirit about it and uh, attitude about it, and we are ready to uh, overcome whatever challenges that we face. 
uh, which, and there will be some, of course, as we work through this uh, over the next couple years. So uh, we expect the main handover to come first of July, uh, and then there will be some, some things that have to be handed over <coughs> after that. Uh, one of the concerns we have that we're working on really hard is that you'll remember on the last uh, reorganization of the colleges, a lot of student support was withdrawn to the central organization. And we really need to get that back out to the uh, campus because it's very important to, uh, to have that there uh, for uh, those students. We've toured the facilities at Sheboygan and we have been there before. We're very familiar with these uh, uh, universities. Uh, because we have students that come from here uh, all the time. So to get this all done, we've set up a process that involves all four campuses. It's run by, uh, there's, a, there's a university system process that we articulate with, but just for this region, we have a person on our campus who heads this up. It has people from all campuses. It's got a steering committee and multiple work groups. Uh, and we are working through all of the functions that we have to finance, student aid, all this stuff we have to work through to get to a single university. And we're, uh, that's going on while uh, Tony and, and Ben and the rest of us are meeting with the county boards and having uh, meetings with uh, members of the community to uh, enlist their support, get their ideas, and listen to their vision uh, for what this uh, new university will be. We call this Project Coastal. All these universities are on this coast, on the coast somehow, in this uh, freshwater ecosystem that we uh, happen to be close to, uh, and it's going pretty well. So I hope you will agree that this is an opportunity, and uh, it's good to see you again, Mr. Chair. <laughs> good to see you. It, yeah, and uh, we really appreciate the uh, the uh, enthusiasm of Adam and and, and Chair, and uh, we hope that we'll get to talk to many of you over the coming months and weeks and years as we work through this. That's a short summary of what we're doing. Thank you. More to come, I'm sure. Yeah. Did anybody have any questions for the Chancellor? No, there's a lot more to come. We rolled out. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Public addresses. We have none. <coughs> Letters, communications, and announcements. County Administrator's Report. There is one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My my 99-year-old grandmother used to say, "Every day is a good day." And as we were going through this tonight, I'm sure there was a little angst in the room, but we'll get through this and working together. Pretty soon, this will be done very smooth, just as our old system was. But I want to thank us. Chris Lewinsky and Elaine and the IT staff and everyone involved for the work on developing this and the time that it's going to take to, to make it happen. So appreciate that. Uh, Chancellor Miller identified some of his guests, and I was going to do the same. So, Gary, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to be here. As you know, uh, the roads were good, and our highway department is a big reason for that. But I'm glad that you and Tony and Ben made it here. Richard. Richard Balgi is here from uh, Bank First, and he is the president of the foundation. So, Rich, we welcome you. Nice to have you with us this evening. Of course, we know Jackie and Dan. They continue to do tremendous work, and we appreciate the strong rapport and relationship we've established with them. And then also I see the LTC president has joined us this evening. Paul Carlson's here. So, Paul, thank you for joining us as well. Appreciate that. I want to touch on uh, three key topics. First. A brief update on the new transportation complex, and then in light of our guests and in light of the time of year, a brief state of the county and some of our accomplishments the past year. But first, the transportation complex. So if we could get that teed up. As you know, every month we have been striving to provide you with a brief update to set the stage, particularly for our guests. This is a $23.8 million project, so this is no small project that the county board has authorized. It's been in play for a couple of years, purchased the, the property back in 2015, and we're consolidating three facilities into one. So I was out there last week because I think as many folks <coughs> are aware, next slide please. Uh, what a difference a week makes. Huh? We had no snow on the ground when I was out there. 
What a beautiful facility. It's about 80% complete. And Brian Olson's here, I see, from the Transportation Department. And Brian is really the right-hand man to Greg Chanel and works closely with Jim Tavist and others and just has done a tremendous job with the oversight and work on this. Uh, as I said, about 80% complete and the staff and the equipment has now been moved in from Plymouth and from Elkhart. So we have taken occupancy, <coughs> occupancy of the building. Work continues, most of it's inside and we're hoping to be able to move the rest of the staff in come April. So that's an outside shot. Next slide, please. Fuage, uh, fuel area, as you can see, some of the trim is going up around the building. Again, remarkable to see that picture compared to how things look today. Next slide. Outdoor cold storage building that uh, last time you saw it didn't have the walls up. We still need to get the roof on it, but that's in play. Next slide. Inside, we're starting to see the walls go up. So where the staff, many of the staff are going to have their offices. Next slide as well as the entrance to the building, the greeting area where the receptionist is going to be. So I know some of you have toured this of late, but the walls are starting to go up and take shape. Next slide, please. This one obviously is self-explanatory. I'm sure everyone knows exactly what that is. I had to ask Greg myself. That is the pumping system for the hot water heat that goes in the in-floor uh, facility. So that's what keeps all the water going through in very efficient way to heat the building. <coughs> Next slide. As I said, the equipment is in the building. We've got a number of our uh, plows in play as well as, next slide, bigger equipment for whether it's moving earth or also getting out there and uh, whether it's shoulder work or using them occasionally for scraping. But we are taking access of the building. Next slide. This is the training center, lunch room, emergency operations center. So a multi-use building, the furniture has arrived. Next slide. And here are some really good people that have been working hard for quite some time. You see Jim Tabeast, our building services director. I just mentioned Brian, Greg Schnell, that's Bernie Romer. And those are two employees from the uh, furniture company. So that's it. That. Things are continuing to look good largely on time and under budget. All right, with that, and this may be more interesting to some of our guests than some of our county board supervisors, because most of you have a pretty good handle on things, but I, that, that slide we can put down for now. That one you can keep up if you want. <laughs> Sheboygan County Government, State of the County, how did our last year go? In a couple of months, we'll be closing the books for financials, although I can tell you from the Finance Committee meeting just last week that we're looking good financially. Once again, departments have done a good job working with budget parameters. We're expecting to have a, a modest but positive variance. But to set the stage for everyone, we have 825 employees here working in 19 departments administering over 200 programs and services. Far more complex than UW-Green Bay, let me tell you. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. And the big four that we like to fondly refer to are Health and Human Services Department, a $34 million department. The Sheriff's Department, or Law Enforcement, that's a $24 million operation. Our Transportation Department, which includes highways and our airport, that's a $19 million operation. And then our Rocky Mill Healthcare Center, which is a $13 million operation. That comprises nearly two-thirds of our budget, those four departments alone. Why is it so interesting to work for county board, for county government? Because in addition to those four departments, we have building services, information systems, finance, human resources, planning and resources, a treasurer, a county clerk, a register of deeds, a medical examiner, corporation counsel, clerk of courts, district attorney, family court commissioner, the airport, UW extension, and veteran services. If you're bored, you're in the wrong organization. There is so much going on in county government always opportunities for improvement, and always challenges. We are the eighth largest employer, believe it or not, behind Kohler, Bemis Manufacturing, the Sheboygan Area School District, NEMAX, Argento, Aurora, and Johnsonville Sausage, and we aren't seeking to be number one. In fact, our staffing, which I'll touch on in a minute, has gone down considerably over the last decade. Obviously, change is inevitable. 
It's always happening. And we either ride these waves of change or we get buried underneath them. And if you're part of the county board or part of this organization, you recognize that the state partnership is really important. And it's been a partnership that's had its ups and downs and ebbs and flows over the years. As the right arm of state government, we administer predominantly state programs and services. At times, the state's been a tremendous partner, and at other times, it's been a little frustrating. State-mandated programs, which most people in the public don't necessarily care about, they just want their services delivered efficiently and effectively, but the state-mandated programs that we're responsible for administering, the state does not provide adequate funds to do so. So it puts increasing pressure on the property tax levy. Yet at the same time, we have one-size-fits-all property tax levy caps in place. That makes it challenging. We have state government that presently, from time to time, is usurping local control. And our PRACOM committee and other committees have felt that of late and certainly doesn't support local decision making. Yet, our demands for services going up or down. <coughs> they are going up. Helping people with mental illness, <coughs> economic support, public health, those addicted to drugs and alcohol, child abuse and neglect, elder services, the need for law enforcement, the need to have a detention center, the need to have alternatives to incarceration, helping victims of domestic violence, abuse, sexual assault, providing natural resource protection and enhancement, workforce development, maintaining our transportation <coughs> system. Demands for services going down. Incredible pressures that we all collectively work with and strive to do the best we can with the resources we have and balance that with the demands of the public to hold the line on property taxes or tax increases, period. Yet some way, somehow, year after year, thanks to effective leadership, excellent collaboration, we find a way to get the job done. Year after year, this county board and our co-workers <coughs> find a way to get the job done. Unlike the federal government, we balance our budget every year. We're close and accountable to our constituents. We have streamlined, prioritized, prioritized, and consolidated numerous programs and services. The county board yourselves took the leadership to reduce your numbers and consolidate the number of committees that you work with. Our table of organization, I mentioned it earlier, over the last decade, we've reduced our staff by nearly 40%. Our payroll costs are less today than they were 10 years ago. In 2007, we had 1,349 employees. Today, we have closer to 825. We're tightening our belt. We're always striving to gain efficiencies, and we have certainly downsized or right-sized. We share services and collaborate with other units of government in the private sector. Our purchasing agent, we now we share with the city of Sheboygan. We provide combined emergency dispatch. We should support our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. We share revenue with the other municipalities for their transportation needs. We work collaboratively with the hospitals, nonprofit organizations, with people struggling with mental health issues or to help children and family in need. We recently purchased Amsterdam Dunes, which I'm very proud of. Beautiful area to preserve for future generations, and we're establishing a wetland mitigation bank, which we need for economic development and expanding roads and airports. Together, we collaborate, we deliver. So every now and then when I'm at the YMCA trying to work off years and years of weight that I shouldn't have, or out and about at the store or whatever it might be, we often get the question, don't we, well, what's new? What's new at UW Green Bay or UW Sheboygan or county government? You know, when you get that question, what's new? You almost hesitate to, where do you start to respond with something like that? What's new? There is so much going on that most of your family members and constituents, they don't have any idea. I mean, you are involved in so much. We are involved in so much. So next time you're asked what's new, here are 12 
what I consider some of the most <coughs> impressive, collaborative accomplishments of the past year. And I'll strive to go through them quickly. Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center recently had a state survey and received the highest possible over ra overall rating of five stars. Best survey we can get. Pretty doggone important when you're providing care to residents and the elderly that are relying on you for those services. Outstanding results. Chris Lewinsky and his team, you got a feel for it tonight, updating our own county board voting system, which takes time. In addition to that, Chris and his team have been updating VoIP and Gmail, which many of us are getting a feel for this, this uh, week as well. And I've, I've, I've kind of set the stage or the cutoff that if you're 50 or older, it's not that much fun. And if you're a millennial or younger than that, piece of cake. And so we're working through that. But I want to thank Chris and his staff and Elaine and everyone who helps us work through those technological advancements. They do a nice job and we need to be patient and we have to remember that every day is a good day. Pennsylvania Avenue property sale. I was so pleased that the county board supported getting rid of a parking lot that had less than 20% usage, eliminating three dilapidated <coughs> homes and selling that property for economic development. That's in play and Aaron Brolta obviously took a key lead role with that. Information technology. A disaster recovery system. A lot of people could care less about that until there's a fire in the courthouse or some type of emergency and all of a sudden 19 <coughs> departments don't have the ability to access data or information. Imagine the standstill that would put the county and most businesses today. And again, Chris and his team established a disaster recovery data center that now provides for backup of our operations in, in, the, in case that ever happens. An employee engagement survey, we took a risk. We asked our employees what they thought. Not just one or two, but all of them. Sent the survey to all of our employees and said, what do you think? How can we improve our organization? What's your level of engagement? How can your supervisor improve? How can we collectively improve? And over 500 employees participated. We had a county wide all-employee meeting a couple of months ago. A lot of folks who were involved, including HR and pulling that together, did a nice job. And though without question, there's always room for improvement, and in some cases we may have received some uh, sobering feedback on how we can improve our organization, the consultant involved said of all the public organizations they ever did an engagement survey like this, we had the strongest or highest level of positive feedback. Not bad. And they didn't do just two per, they did a couple dozen. So it was good to see that. 31 miles of road work completed. We achieved our goal of going over 30 miles a year. All this discussion at the state level about our transportation infrastructure and how we're going to maintain it, improve it, pay for it, can get kicked down the road. Continues to happen. Yet the county board looked at the problem, worked with their team to develop a plan, and by implementing the one half percent county sales tax, we now have established a sustainable revenue source to help maintain a safe and reliable transportation system, fiscally responsible, reduced borrowing, reduced debt service, provide direct property tax relief, and share as the first county in the state some of the revenue with the other 28 municipalities for their own transportation work. Huge accomplishment. The district attorney and health and human services department pulled together thanks to additional resources provided by the county board to help address the problem of our foster care caseload. It's doubled since 2010 due to opioid abuse and other issues, concerns. And now the Health and Human Service Department and the District Attorney's Office are tackling that caseload, providing long-awaited permanence for children, opening the door to adoption. Pretty important work. Courthouse security, we also surveyed all of our employees, I think back in 2016, and 90% responded they wanted a secured entrance. 
Chairman Wagner, Supervisor Ziegelbauer, right now are participating in the Courthouse Security Committee. It has about 20 participants representing 10 departments. We have a plan for implementation this summer to enhance the entrance, the steps, cameras, equipment, and have law enforcement personnel there for a secured courthouse, which many counties our size have already done. We're going to get it done this summer. Jim DeBeast, again, and others have been really involved with that. Emergency medical dispatch training. You know, we go through the combined dispatch and all the good work that went into that by Christy DeBlay and our sheriff staff, Inspector Bill Bruckbauer and, and Inspector Jim Rousseau. And more recently, the Sheriff's Department just partnered with Aurora and Acuity to launch emer emergency medical dispatching. The key is to respond as quickly as possible to help people in need. Now our staff are trained to provide emer emergency medical dispatching, so these potentially life-saving instructions, they can imme immediately give guidance and help, and it's already saved lives. It's remarkable. Opioid detox, detox services established. Chairman Wagner, this was one of the key initiatives when he was elected by you to be our, our chairman. He wanted to see us do more here. And of course, Tom Agerbrecht and the Health and Human Services Committee were all over this, but some really good work has been done to establish a comprehensive and collaborative approach to combating <laughs> opioids, provide treatment, re reduce deaths, save lives, keep families together, and in addition to that, our drug and alcohol court, the <coughs> Veterans Court, is making a difference as well. In fact, if you ever get a chance, and I know I've touched on that before, attend one of the graduation ceremonies. Listen to one of the graduates and how the resources that came to bear changed their life, saved their life, reunited them with their children. It is very gratifying and certainly speaks well to the support of the county board and our staff. The last two, fiscally, your track record second to none. Second to none. Healthy bond rating, healthy reserves, modest property tax levy increases or decreases. We've really held the line for the last decade. And that's going to get more and more difficult going forward as we continue to reduce and consolidate and streamline at some point. It's going to get more and more challenging. But your, your track record has been second to none. And then lastly, I think probably the number one what's new or what was just a key accomplishment last year was the transportation complex. To consolidate three facilities into one, to uh, make the decision to purchase the property for a little over 500,000, to build a facility for about 23, 23.3 million, I mean, that's a big decision. And it reflects very well on the county board and will position our community for su success for a long time. Uh, Charles Sweet is here I see this evening. I know he's working with Stakeholders at the airport about a proposed airport terminal that's being explored. We're also exploring putting in a customs facility. And there you have what's new in Sheboygan County. If you remember one or two of those, you can certainly have a good discussion with a constituent or a family member. But I'd just like to end by saying thank you. You don't hear it that often. Fortunately, the pays were really good. <laughs> Thank you for the work you do. Thank you for being so dedicated. I look at folks like Roger Destrudy and Bill Gehring who were on the executive committee when I was hired nearly 20 years ago. This is a very dedicated county board who cares about this community and has a track record of helping make good things happen. We care about one another. We treat one another with respect. We strive to work in a collaborative manner to problem solve. And I thank you for that. We have an excellent staff here. And I feel very fortunate, and I think we all should take pride in being part of Sheboygan County government. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. So as you ran, did you have a question? Yes, will the board be getting an update on the sales tax? Uh, that was Use your mic, Betty. Will the board be getting an update on the, the, the new 2017 sales tax and the new 
Um, I'll ask that we're received. I, I don't. I want to make sure Emmett uh, is that recorded correctly with the uh, the alliance. Well, Emmett has an excellent memory, so I'm sure he won't need a recording. But uh, we just shared this at the finance committee meeting. Uh, uh, what a couple of days ago, right? Last Wednesday. Right. Last Wednesday. Right. Thank you, Tom. And, and if memory serves, we've exceeded expectations, as everyone recalls. And yes, the answer is yes. I will come back with a report and a handout to summarize that. But we did just share that at finance, and I see Wendy here as well, paging through. Any chance you have that with you or not? If, if, if memory serves, we were expecting. We budgeted for 2018 nine million. Because as you recall, when we put our plan together, estimates were we would receive somewhere between eight and a half and nine and a half million a year. So for 2018, we budgeted nine million. For 2017, we budgeted two thirds of that, 6.5 million. And at this point, I think we're closer to about eight million. I'm looking at Wendy. So we we did exceed our expectations with our budget, we took more of a conservative approach. Those dollars will fall to the bottom line or our retained earnings area for transportation purposes to be used as intended. And the beauty of that is when you have sales tax revenue, there's going to be ups and downs based on the economy. And if we have a healthy reserves there, when things are slower, we'll still have adequate funds to appropriately maintain our transportation system. But I will come back with a full report. Thank you, Adam. Okay, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, resolution number 20. Regarding the amending land records modernization plan, can you recommendation to adopt? Supervisor Wegman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll vote for um, approving resolution number 20. Thank you, Supervisor Wegman. Supervisor Geary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Geary. Any discussion? Questions? Charlie, did you have a question? Seeing none, uh, please push your yes or no button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 21. Regarding approving acquisition of the line utility corridor property for recreational trail development, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 21. Supervisor Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Dan. Supervisor Bonner, did you have a question or a comment? No, it's been second. That's fine. Supervisor Otto? Okay. Working the bugs out here. <laughs> Any questions or discussion? If not, please push your I or nay button. Motion's approved, 20 aye, 2 no. Thank you. Ordinance number 10. Regarding adding Chagwin County Aviation Corporation representative to the Airport Advisory Committee, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Tisserie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I'll move to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Tisserie. Supervisor Urena. Second motion to adopt, adopt ordinance number 10. Thank you, Supervisor Urena. Any discussion or questions? Seeing no lights, uh, please push your yes or no button. Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Uh, consideration of committee reports, finance committee, resolution number 22. Regarding authorizing Chibwaiti County Planning and Conservation Department to apply for 2017 County Conservation Aid, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Dale. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will move to adopt resolution 22. Thank you, Supervisor Dale. Supervisor Winkle. Second. 
Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Any discussion? Hearing none, please push your yes or no button. Consideration of community reports and law activity. Ordinance number nine. Regarding establishing a speed zone on County Roads G and P, Town of Ryan, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Evan. Thank you, Chairman Wicker. I would like to, to make a motion to reject okay. the recommendation. Okay. Is there a second? Is there a second? Supervisor Bottom? All right, move to approve. Okay, well, we're still looking for a second on the motion. I think I have to move with that first. Hey. So, I got you, I got you. Okay. Supervisor Rivas. I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Rivas. Uh, motion to reject, we don't have too many like that. Was there? So we're going to remove that motion. Because, because the, there is no ordinance right now. So a motion to reject the ordinance is a nullity because there isn't an ordinance. Isn't a rescinded ordinance rescinded from our votes? Well, we're not rescinding it. Okay, so uh, I'll clear the board and we'll start over. Uh, that's why we have the Corporation Council here. And Supervisor Distribute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move to an act. Thank you, Supervisor Distribute. Is there a second? You got a second? Huh? No. <laughs> I didn't think so, but your light was on. <laughs> Supervisor Koch? I'll second it. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Now, discussion. Yes. You could have moved to file. Your choice is to move to adopt or enact or to file. Okay. No bad intentions here. Supervisor, you're in. Do you have a comment on it? No, I was just Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Anybody else have a comment on the motion? Supervisor Evan? Thank you, Chairman Baker. Um, a lot of times uh, we're coming up with these, these recommendations to reduce the speed zones in, in some of these areas. Um, granted, you know, there's a number of reasons why we might want to reduce the speed limit for pedestrian uh, safety and stuff like that, but uh, a lot of times I don't feel it's necessary um, because if, if they're speeding it, um, if they're exceeding the speed of the limit, what they're doing there now is, is just going to be that much more grievous if they reduce the limits. Besides that, um, in this situation, 
enforceability as I perceive it, and it's my only perception, is it's uh, practically, uh, it's going to be very difficult. So I don't know why we want to want to change something that's been in effect since, since uh, I've known about it. Um, and if it's only for uh, a small minority of people <coughs> that want to change it for whatever reason, um, I don't see any need to do it. So I'm going to vote not to change this speech. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Nelson. Being not familiar with exactly what parts of J and P are uh, being suggested, could somebody explain exactly what they we're talking about and the reasons for that? Brian, are you uh, I'm looking like you're just uh, on this one? Lakeshore Drive to um, the other side of the boat landing. But if you're a big Alcar Lake boat landing, or uh, you're familiar with that area, right? That's one. That's one of the areas. That curve, right? That curve. Yeah, yeah there's a quite slight curve starting south of JP there. Yes. Um, the other section is on J. Would be just um, basically where A goes to the west on the other side of the lake. It would be on the southeast corner of the big Alcar Lake, uh, where about the back nine for Quickwalk is. Sure. You go there to the north, there's a section of 45 miles an hour in there as well. And that's to 35. Just, just some of the follow up that have been accidents or problems that I believe there's, to change? There's a, there was a study a request was done, uh, process. We did a speed study through there with our traffic calendar. And uh, uh, part of this is being pushed, I think. Um, there used to be a path around Elkhart Lake that was not a public path outside of the shore all the way around. And a lot of the residences are pushing to not have people basically trespass. So now people are looking for alternative places to walk and they're concerned about walking on the road because of the speeds, their narrow roads. Um, so I'm afraid to get hit. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Supervisor Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to support Supervisor Epping's uh, thoughts on this. I, I, I watched where they widened the road in my township and then they proceeded and made the, the road much safer and then proceeded to drop the speed limit 10 miles an hour just like we're seeing here now. There hasn't been any road changes but I, I think uh, Supervisor Repping probably has a better knowledge of this road than most of us here and uh, if he doesn't think it's necessary to drop the speed limit I would agree with Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Wagner. I was just going to say, uh, Supervisor Epping alluded that only a few people are affected by it. That much is true, but the few people affected are the people who live out there. And uh, the Transportation Committee made this recommendation based on testimony that was given to us. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Bemis. I don't know what I was going to ask, uh, just exactly what is the speed limit there now? I believe it's 45 going 45, 45, 45 which, I, to which I feel is a safe speed in that particular area. As you know, I'm opposed to all the speed limit changes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Rivas. Supervisor Adler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, being in my district, the District 14, and being familiar with the roads. I support the Transportation Committee's uh, decision to do this. Uh, it is really an element of safety. There are a lot more people visiting, coming to Elkhart Lake as an uh, area to, uh, for tourism. There's a lot more walkers. There's a lot of walkers with children, younger adults, and things. So um, just from the aspect of safety, I will support this. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. Uh, Supervisor Tistrick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This was uh, brought to the uh, Highway Committee with the recommendation of the Safety Committee that's looked into every one of these speed uh, 
speed zone request, and it was their recommendation that that, that, that be adjusted accordingly. So the um, highway committee didn't act on their own. This is a recommendation from the safety committee. Thank you, Supervisor Testuri. Supervisor? Thank you, Chairman. One more thing about this. Uh, the, the, almost everybody drives in this room, and, and a lot of people, you know, the majority of people drive in society. We don't need a speed zone reduction while we're driving to reduce our, our speeds to be safe on the roads. From what I know, on accident uh, causation, it's accidents are caused by vehicles, the people, or the weather. The weather and the vehicles are okay. It's it's up to the it's up to the driver to, to be conscientious about what he's doing. So ultimately, no matter what speed it is, uh, accidents occur. People can get injured. In this case, you know, a reduction of the speed by 10 miles an hour. Not necessarily going to reduce the people that are used to driving that area and drive it with due diligence and, and responsibility. And and I don't think uh, we're going to accomplish anything by going through the process of reducing the limits. People will drive accordingly or not accordingly. So I, I would uh, begin once again against this change. Thank you, Thank you Supervisor Abbott. Supervisor Bob. Yes, when this was brought to the Transportation Committee, a uh, couple of factors here that make this probably unique, that the historic raceway, or the loop around Elkhart Lake that was used for the historic driving uh, competition and still is used for the citizens who are trying to develop a walking trail and are in the process of this, but they realize that there's a large percentage of the population that likes to walk around the lake. And add to that tourist traffic who may be less familiar with roads than most county residents. And I think you're, you're seeing a mix develop here where the walkers are asking for a safer environment. Thank you, Supervisor Bosco. Supervisor Hopper. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, as, as I stated earlier, that everyone does drive like Tom said, and everybody understands the growth in the village, and if they don't, I'll be happy to try and provide that information, but not only is the village growing, to Al's point about the people that are in the village, and there's more cars, there's more people, there's more younger people, they're walking, they're jogging, and this is, again, a safety issue. So I, I just reiterate that. It's not an arguable thing. It's just an observation and an opinion because I live there, so I see it. I know what's happening there. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. See. Supervisor Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll probably support the committee's action on this due to the fact that Supervisor Adler spoke uh, highly of it. It's his district. He has first-hand knowledge, I believe, of this area. However, I do think that uh, I've heard uh, Supervisor Bosman relate to the uh, uh, inability of us to make corrections to the roadway or anything due to historical value. I'm wondering if we could also in the future have our planning department or somebody look at a side of the road, not the road, but like we do bike paths or things of that nature off to the side 20, 30 feet away from that roadway if something of that nature could be developed because this is only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. 
45 to 35, it still kills if somebody gets clobbered. They're going to be hurt. Uh, 25, 15, 10, how low do we go? So I think we should start looking for the future. This is a developing area. I really think we should start looking to how can we develop a safe pathway outside of the historical uh, window of this area. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Project. Supervisor Bemis. I think part of this is in the area where we've got that parking place where we charge people to park if they want to go on to the lake. Uh, I've been driven through there quite a bit. And sure, we're going to have more traffic. But you take a look at your cars today. The, the ability to stop is a lot better than it was probably when that 45 mile an hour speed limit was put on, put on there. And so I can't see. We try to move traffic. Roads are to move traffic. They aren't for people who play to walk on or kids to play on. Thank you, Supervisor Venus. Supervisor Albert. This is the final thought. Well, I'm not sure why we're discussing this, okay. this but uh, yeah, it, it was 45 miles an hour before. There was plenty of new housing added in the Elk area. The Ostoff was built, and there's all sorts of additional people, young people, and joggers, and, and older people walking. And, you know, it's, it, it just makes sense. I and mean, I wish they'd put it to 25, to be honest with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Albert. I see no more lights, so we call a question on them. Please push your yes or no button. Motion's approved, 17 yes, 5 no. Thank you everybody, I'll turn the gavel over to the vice chair. <coughs> Thank you everybody for your patience with the technology tonight. We'll move forward on this. Resolution to introduce resolution number 23 from the finance committee. We're going to carry over a, a unexpected 27, unexpected 2017 appropriations to 2018. Resolution number 23 that is referred to the executive committee. Resolution number 24 from the planning resource Ag and extension committee. Regarding approving revision to farmland preservation plan. Resolution number 24 is referred to the executive committee. Resolution number 25 from planning resource Ag and extension committee. Regarding participating in snowmobile aids program for the years 2018 and 2019. Resolution number 25 is referred to the finance committee. There are no ordinances to be introduced at this time. The is in order. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. Second, Supervisor Winkle. Second. Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor. Please vote.